Well, I finally did it. I went and saw a Transformers film in theaters. I had never seen one in theaters before, but I decided this is the perfect time to break that streak. It's been going for 10 years, and you know, I liked the first one alright. I thought the first one's okay. And then the next three movies seemed to just get worse and more horrible and more disgustingly awful and just... Uh, but the fifth one, I'm gonna give the fifth one a shot. So I decided, hey, I'm gonna pack up some food, go to the movie theater, and go watch a two and a half hour piece of entertainment from Michael Bay. And uh, it was exactly, exactly what I thought it was gonna be. A complete remake of all the other ones that had come before it. I don't even really know how to review this movie. I'm just... I, it's Transformers. Everybody kind of has the same thoughts about Transformers. I'll give a quick rundown of what I think of the other ones. First one, Transformers. Uh, I got the DVD for some reason for my birthday one year and knew nothing about it. Decided to watch it. It was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I still enjoy it to this day even though there's a lot of problems with it. It's really boring at times and it's just kind of your uh, generic action flick. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen came out. That was another one. Didn't see it in theaters but I got the DVD the week it came out. I think once again for my birthday. Decided to pop it in, watched it, and uh, it took me a couple tries with that one. That was one where I don't think at my age I realized that there could be bad movies out there. It took me a couple of tries to actually get into the movie. Uh, and still, the second half I can never remember exactly what happens. It's just sort of a huge blur to me. And then we have the uh, third one. What's this one? It's not Dark Side of the Moon, it's just Dark of the Moon. I get that title wrong all the time. This one is the one where when there's action sequences there's literally blackouts like a trailer. Like it's literally edited like a trailer. And then you got Shia LaBeouf trying to get a job and then he's got a new girlfriend and then he's got God, I don't even remember. Like the whole last half of the movie is like one big action sequence in Chicago, and you just don't care. Then you got the fourth one, and I was actually pretty excited for the fourth one, uh, because it's got Mark Wahlberg in it. And then I watched it, and at first I was like, this is a lot of fun, this is really cheesy, this is going right back to what the first one was like. And then, the rest of the movie is horrifying, and I completely let lose track of what happened. There was something about this company that makes Transformers now, and those Transformers are fighting the other Transformers. Here we are, fifth movie, The Last Night. It's not going to be The Last Movie. There's going to be a Bumblebee spinoff, which I'm actually, I got some hope for because the guy who made uh, Cubo on the Two Strings, he's actually directing that movie, so I got a little hope for it. And then they got Transformers 6, which may or may not have Michael Bay in it. I have no idea what's going to end up happening. But here we go, with his supposed last film, The Last Night, and this is, I, it's just like the other ones, it's just kind of boring, it's getting worse, it's just horrible story, the characters really aren't there, there's horrible jokes, you think they're funny, but they're not really funny, and then there's a story that really doesn't make sense, but this one's even more complex. You got one storyline where it's John Turturro and he's, you know, figuring out that where all these alien ship parts are and Stonehenge was the center of it because when Pangea was formed and it spread apart that for some reason Stonehenge was the center of it. And then we have an action sequence at Stonehenge at the end. And you got another storyline where Optimus Prime is going out into space and then they do the Fate of the Furious thing, where the uh, person makes Optimus Prime evil for kind of no reason, and then he comes to the planet to take over the planet for Cybertron. So we're kind of doing the same thing we did in the third movie. Okay. Uh, and then we got another storyline where Mark Wahlberg's in hiding, even though I don't understand why he's in hiding. I thought in the last movie he wasn't going to be in hiding anymore. I thought Stanley Tucci was going to get him a house. Apparently not. And Mark Wahlberg's daughter's in college, so she's not in the movie. But he's got a new girl in the movie who's this young girl who just lives on her own. And actually, she was a pretty good actress, but I don't understand what her point in the movie was. She's good with, you know, with cars. And then she's got these little pets that follow her around because those will make great toys. Uh, yeah. And then you got another storyline that involves uh, Josh Dumel and he comes back into the series and he's 
on his own little trek to, I don't know, I don't know exactly, he works for some task force that takes down robots, I guess. And then he got another one with Anthony Hopkins, and he's got his little British robot butler thing, which I actually kind of liked, but Anthony Hopkins is in it, I, I guess. I, And he's got this information about how he's a Witwickian, and the, all these Witwickens, this family history that go all these different routes. Apparently they hold all the information about the Transformers, and they're some of the smartest people on the planet. You got, like, Albert Einstein, and then you got uh, Abraham Lincoln, you got Harriet Tubman, because apparently when she was doing the Underground Railroad, that's what she was doing. And then um, you also got Stephen Hawking, even though uh, Anthony Hopkins says he's the last of the Wit Wiccans, and they show a picture of Shia LaBeouf, and they make it seem like, oh, is Shia LaBeouf dead? Well, they also show a picture of Stephen Hawking, so he's obviously not dead right now, so I guess Anthony Hopkins is lying when he says he's the last of the Wit Wiccans. Maybe he's the last lying in history of Wit I don't understand. I didn't understand that. And I didn't understand what, why they were called Wit Wiccans. That was stupid. Oh, and then you got this other storyline with this girl who works at Oxford University, and she's apparently the one who can hold the spear. So, Mark Wahlberg is the last knight, and he gets this emblem to cover his body to save him from, like, bullet wounds and stuff. Like, he has this power, apparently, so it's like a piece that turns into a sword also, and he can, like, fight Transformers, so I guess he's the last knight. And, but, but he's not the one who can grab this spear, and this spear apparently is the thing that can bring uh, Cybertron, the planet, to life or something. I don't know what's going on. Two other characters, who uh, the token black guy who was hanging out with Mark Wahlberg and the little girl, they just kind of disappear for most of the movie, because the, one of the, the British robots like, oh, you just gotta leave them because I'll save them. So then Mark Wahlberg leaves those two characters and then they disappear for most of the movie. And then Anthony Hopkins shows up and he puts him in the submarine, but then he's like, I have to leave now. Why? Oh, because they didn't pay me enough to be in these scenes. I guess. Just random scenes. And then they're cutting between these scenes, but each subsequent cut to a different scene really doesn't match. It doesn't make sense. You'll be cutting from Optimus Prime to uh, Mark Wahlberg out in South Dakota. Then you cut to John Turturro really explaining something really quick. And he only has scenes in Cuba the whole time. And then they make a mention to Fidel Castro even though he's dead. So I don't know when this movie was written. They didn't change any of that. It only starts meshing together when the characters meet up towards the end. But even then, they're still trying to get these other storylines meshed together. And you really don't see a combination of everything until like the final 30 minutes of the movie. And by then you're like, oh my god, how much longer is this movie? And really weird, weirdly enough, okay, so this is like, I want, what was it, two and a half hours, two hours, 40 minutes long? And then there's a quick after credit scene because you gotta put the after credit scene in every movie. And this is a really weird one. It's like, a, it's not an after credits, it's a mid credits. And it's... The, the credits show this character walking around, like they're playing the credits while the mid-credits scene is playing, and then the credits stop and they show the mid-credits scene really quick, so it's sort of like a... I don't know how why they did it this way, it was weird. Then they show the end credits, and the end credits go by in about two minutes, which I don't even know, like, won't the Director's Guild or the Producer's Guild or all these, uh you know, unions get kind of mad about that. I didn't even mention the part with Megatron and the other Decepticons. He goes and gets them out of jail and they do this little Suicide Squad introduction to everybody. And I was like, what, what movie is this? The only part of this movie I really liked was that, you know, Bumblebee, he uses uh, sound audio samples from different movies or songs or whatever. Uh, well, one, at one point, he just yells out, what the hell? But the what the hell is from Hot Rod. It's Andy Samberg from Hot Rod. What the hell? And I was like, holy crap, there was a Hot Rod reference, technically, in a movie. And the only one who would ever catch that is me, because I love that movie. But, yeah, there's a Hot Rod reference. They're so bad, they're good, you know? And I think The Revenge of the Fallen definitely falls into that category. I think this one is in that category too. In fact, I think this is the best one since Transformers. I don't think the first Transformers is as a so bad it's good movie. I think that's a movie that actually is closer to being just a good movie. 
the last night I think is the closest that has come to that I guess in that this one wasn't as racist or sexist or annoying or dumb as the other ones it still is dumb and slightly racist and sexist but it's not as bad if you know what I mean I don't know it's kinda hard to explain but still overall not a good movie I mean what do you, what do you expect it's just cheesy cheesy acting not good characters really confusing convoluted plot stuff you don't care about uh, really awkward scenes really bad cutting really just a big mesh of just annoyances that you'd rather not watch but there's good CGI like always and there's good music from I believe the guy is Steve Jablonski really good score like always I just really like his scores so uh, yeah just like the other movies. Score's good, CGI's good, rest of it, screw it.